In this video, I'm going to show you my five tips for creating apocalyptic art in Photoshop. Learn why story is essential, how to use light to your advantage and much more. Be sure to stay to the end of the video to see how you can use rim light to guide a viewer's eye to certain parts of your art. Let's get on with the video. So the number one tip that I'm going to give you when creating apocalyptic Photoshop art is story. So a lot of work needs, well, it depends on the artist, but I think work needs to be put in to the image before you even open Photoshop. For me, I like to create story and it depends on the person, but you can maybe just jot down an idea of a story. Maybe you can actually write out a paragraph of a story. Uh, I mean, if you're very dedicated, maybe you want to write a actual story with a beginning, middle and end. But as long as you have some story, you can then move forward into creating, bringing this piece of art to life through the story that you have created. And once you've got the story, everything else becomes very simple. And this is because when you know your story, you know what characters are going to be in it, you know the location and where it's going to be set, you know kind of the atmosphere and the mood. Everything comes down to story. And then later on in Photoshop, when you're putting details in, the story also helps you as you edit. So you're creating the scene, you're putting things together, and as you're creating it, you think, oh, this could actually work with the story, this could work with the story, and it, it kind of evolves on its own without just randomly putting things together. But a story is like a guide that helps you create more substantial, I would say, more images uh, with depth. It can, if, if you create images with extra meaning, with metaphors, the story helps you bring all that together into one final art piece. So for this, this image here, I knew that it was going to be apocalyptic. I wanted it to be kind of maybe set in an ap apocalyptic New York. So as you can see here on the sign, we've got welcome um, to the Republic of old New York. So again, that sign was an idea that came on later on, but because I knew the location was going to be New York on a, a, like maybe a destroyed New York, I thought that could be a nice little piece. And then also when I was going along, I thought, oh, what about, because it's set in New York, what other New York-ish elements can I put in? I thought, what's the most New York element? The Statue of Liberty. So I thought, what if we could have something uh, in the background featuring maybe a part of the Statue of Liberty or something along those lines. And again, all this was evolving as I was just going along in the edit and that's because I knew my story. So tip one, story. So let's get on to tip number two. And tip two is stock. Getting the right stock images. So before we jump into the stock aspect of the video, I'd just like to announce that this video is sponsored by Envato Elements. And I like to use Envato a lot. I use it mainly for its 3D assets. So as you can see here, there's some on the screen. There's a ton of 3D assets. And anything you think, can think of, if you type it in, there's usually something that you want. And the good thing about using the 3D in, on Envato is you can click the 360 render button and you can actually turn around the object in real time and then choose an angle you want. And then you can export that as a PNG or a PSD. I prefer to export it as a PNG because there's no background and then you can just slide it into your image. Right, let's get back on with the video. So getting the right stock images is vital to all your Photoshop images, no matter what the image. But when you're creating apocalyptic images, it, it's even more important, I think, because there's a certain aesthetic to apocalyptic images. Um, it's also very hard to find that in one single image. You depends usually with apocalyptic images, it, it tends to be that you have to cut out little pieces from lots of different little images uh, and then put it, build your own world from those little pieces of those images. For example, this the image here, all these um, pieces are from various images. So we've got this part of a motorway here, we've got the Statue of Liberty, we've got some kind of Russian uh, tower here, then we've got this old shed thing from Norway, we've got this background image with the destroyed buildings in, and then we've got lots of 3D elements from Envato. So if we just look into the folder here, so as you can see, I gathered all the stock images beforehand and I put them into one folder, and then when I'm working in Photoshop, I can dip in and out of this folder with all these elements in. But what you want to do is, again, 
before you even go into Photoshop, you want to do some research of the, how you want the image to look. And then you want to go to Adobe Stock or Inverter Elements or wherever you get stock images and just start downloading all the stock that you think you may be, be able to use in your image. Again, like this isn't kind of the glory work of Photoshop. This is the, I guess, more tedious part of Photoshop. I, like sometimes looking for the stock for your images can take hours. Sometimes it can take days. So just add this into like, so if you're creating a big image, just be prepared to add these hours into onto the final image as well, especially if you're working for a client. Cause sometimes if you create, if you're looking for stock for, for hours or days, you need to make sure that you're being paid for that time as well. Cause it's all part of the image process, but collecting stock is very important. So let's just jump back into Photoshop. And as you can see, I built my own world out of all these various uh, stock images. I just took pieces and parts and placed them all together. And this is how I placed them together. And that leads us nicely on to tip number three. It's the, one of the most underrated, but the most important pieces of any kind of art, and that is composition. So for a busy image like, image like this, composition, um, it can be a little bit more difficult because I wanted to create one of those images where there's so much going on, you keep the viewer um, staring at the image for ages, picking up all the little details here and there. But with the power of composition, what you can do is you can lead people through the image with certain techniques. You can create depth with compositional techniques and you can also place certain elements on certain um, grid points. So it depends what grid you're using. So for example, we are using the rule of thirds for this. Now the rule of thirds is a very simple way of using composition. And I would say if you're new to composition or you don't know much about composition, the rule of thirds is a good place to start. But don't just finish there. Look deeper into it because when you do look deeper into composition, there's all, all sorts of ways of composing your image to different grids and different comp uh, compositional techniques. So as you can see, I kind of got this this is the main guy here, so I put him on just touching this point here in the grid, which is on the bottom third, which we wanted. And then we've got this guy here who is also on the bottom third as well in this point here. So that for me is enough for, right, these two guys are uh, where I want to be on the grid. And then everything else in this image, I had to use different compositional techniques to f make the image work. So it wasn't the grid technique, it was more like blending certain things in. It was using atmospheric perspective. It was using GAC, which means greatest area contrast, to, to move your eye around the image. And it was also using balance as well. So because the image eventually is quite a, a dark image, I then needed to balance that out with bright points of light scattered through the image so your eye didn't just go... It did, so yeah, I had places to look to. It just didn't kind of randomly go around the canvas. So as you can see, we added the, the torches in and we've got some rim light as well on these guys, which you will see later on. And then in the background, we've got, we've got blur, which is again, another compositional technique. And we've got, uh, we've got atmosphere perspective as well, which I will bring in later on, which also is creating depth in the image. And you've also got some nice leading lines as well what come into the image here. We've got these lines here, what lead into the center of the image, as you can see, this, this, uh, these barrels create a line moving forward. And then we've got the line with the car as well, which kind of leans towards this guy here. So again, this might think, this might look like, oh, these are just random elements, but they're not. All these things together is composition and using all these techniques together is what creates a masterful final image. So tip four for creating apocalyptic art in Photoshop is atmosphere. You need to set the right atmosphere for your image. And that can mean many things. For example, because we know our story now, we know it's apocalyptic, we know our atmosphere should be usually, traditionally, very gritty, quite low key, quite dark, full of mystery and intrigue. We want little bits of uh, detail and storytelling everywhere in the image. So for this image here, what I did is I lowered all the the tonal values down. I then brought in um, certain little elements to the image, like the atmospheric haze as well. 
in the distance just over here in the background we've got a little bit of like mist and fog here as well um, we've got quite a gritty image we've got the uh, I've painted in all this kind of overgrown I guess it's ivy or leaves all on the motorway here we've got rust textures and things on this sign I've, I've made I cut part of the sign off so it made the sign look old plus we've just got a very kind of somber creepy mood and again because we knew our story that it's easy to then create an atmosphere based around that story an atmosphere is a big part of an image and it's not just um, adding mist in it, it's also the feeling of the overall image uh, so atmosphere again maybe something that's overlooked but also very important but because our atmosphere is very dark what we do need now uh, is our tip number five which is lighting so what do I mean by lighting well because our, our atmosphere had the image very dark and low key and low lit what we needed to do then was to add some light in there to balance out the dark of the image with some light. We don't want it to be light everywhere, which is some little spots of light to garner interest. And also, the main thing for me is to bring contrast onto our main guys here. So when it was dark, this guy was kind of fading into the background and this fat guy was fading into the background. So when I was creating the image, I was like, right, I need to somehow add focus or create effects that bring the models into focus. So I thought, right, rim light is a good way of doing this. So I would light the side of this guy with rim light. And then I was like, right, we can't just light people with rim light and have no motivational uh, light. So it has to be motivated somehow. It has to be coming from somewhere. So then I thought, right, what I could do is I can turn these headlights on, on this car. The headlights can come over here. They can create a little bit of uh, balance between light and dark in the image as we've got light this side, dark that side. It creates a nice balance. Plus, it gives us rim light on this side of the guy. And it also makes this guy stand out of the image a lot more because we're getting GAC, which is greatest area of contrast. So we've got light here and he's quite dark, so it just means we can see him a lot more. And then I have I wanted to have a nice little bit of uh, rim light on this other side, but I wanted it to be a separate colour. And I thought, right, so what if I put some kind of orange rim light here, but that means then I need a light source here. So what I did then is I brought a fire torch in here, I placed it on this container. We now have motivation for this rim light here, and we also can light up this little bit of area here, which was too dark before and again I use the same kind of rules for the guy on the left hand side we had a little bit of uh, reflective light coming from the headlights here but then I also wanted it I just wanted it to be more dynamic light wise so I thought again I want him to have a split kind of light on him so I, I again added orange to this side and then I just thought right so how can I motivate the light behind in this orange light these torches here are probably a little bit too far away so what I thought is I'll put one of those old uh, barrels where they usually have things burning in with fire behind him. We can have some embers coming over him, which is cre again creating overlap, which is blending him into the scene even more. And then we have uh, again GAC, we've got greatest area of contrast. So we've got this bright light here, we've got the rim light here, and it's also contrasted against this white light here. So your eyes are focusing on this guy and also on this guy here and it's pulling them out from the image from the background so not only that i also wanted to add some lights on this sign again for storytelling purposes so you can see the sign but also so your eye keeps then moving around the image to all these different little light points so we've got light here it goes around here we come around here it brings us across here and back around here and then up so it's kind of creating a little bit of a circle as well with the light and it also helps us with the foreground elements so especially this side here we've got this bright part and now you can see the foreground element which is creating depth so if I was to turn these lights off so let's just move down let's just turn that off so let's turn the headlights of the car off and see how this looks so we've got headlight here Got a headlight there. Let's 
turn that off. And then let's go down to the bottom and let's turn the uh, curves off. As you can see, he's blending into the background a bit more, but let's even turn the rim light off him. And let's go, where is the guy? He is somewhere around here. So when we turn the rim light off, as you can see, is totally sinking into that background now so by using light creatively we can add focus to certain points of the image where we want the viewers eye to go so let me just turn that back on again so that's with rim light as you can see he's uh, standing out a little bit more but still not great and then if we bring the lights of the car back on Look at that now. He's definitely coming out of that background. He's popping out. Our eye goes straight to that guy. If you squint your eyes a little bit, the greatest area of contrast is this area here. So our eye is being taken there first. And this guy is actually the main guy of the image. This is our focal point. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Thanks a lot guys for watching, if you enjoyed this one then I know you're going to love my tropical and arctic video from a couple of weeks ago.